Now let's look at an example um, and use our indirect derivation uh, method. So this theorem uh, is an argument with no premise, it is also called de Morgan's theorem. So it's a, a slightly more complicated than the previous uh, arguments that we have. Um, so it states the following, not P or Q implies not P and not Q. So this is some sort of how we distribute this negation sign over uh, uh, this uh, disjunction uh, sentence. All right, so or becomes and, and P and Q becomes not P and not Q. All right, so how do we prove this? Well, so here I'm going to use two approaches. I'm going to use indirect proof, but also don't forget this is a conditional sentence, so therefore I need to use conditional derivation. So remember how we proved uh, conditional sentences. We start assuming uh, the first part, because if the first part is false, this whole statement is true anyway. So therefore, let's assume that uh, not P or Q is, is a true statement. All right, so assumption for conditional derivation. All right, very well. Now I need to show that not P and not Q is true. Well, because this is a conjunction and, I need to prove that not P is true, and I also need to prove that not Q is also true. So how do I prove that not P is true? All I know is, is this statement. So I can't really use direct proof, so let's prove it indirectly. How do I do that? Open a new box. What is the conclusion I am trying to uh, achieve? Uh, I am trying to prove that not P is true. So deny this conclusion, not not P. All right, so this is line two. So suppose for a contradiction that not P is false. So therefore not not P is true. So this is assumption for indirect derivation. I call it AID. All right, well, in line three, I can simply say, well, this is double negation, all right, double negation of line two. So P must be true. All right, what else do I know? Um, Very well. I know that because this is uh, a true statement, whether Q is true or false, P or Q must be true. This is the rule addition. Addition to the line theory. Okay. What do I get? Well, here you go. I got the contradiction. Remember, I had not P or Q. So I just repeat my statement in line one. I achieved P or Q. So these two statements, you know, the statement is true and its negation is also true. This is a contradiction. And this contradiction, I derived everything properly by using my inference rules. So nothing is wrong, but I reached a contradiction. That means my conclude, uh, my, I'm sorry, my assumption must be wrong, uh, must be false. So not not P is false, meaning, so I close the box because I reached the contradiction. Uh, in line six, not P must be correct. So I'm gonna call this indirect derivation thanks to my arguments between two to five. Very well, so this part is true, but remember this is and, so I need to prove this part as well. But you know what? The approach is very similar. If I proved not P in this indirect uh, method, I can prove not Q also in an indirect method. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna open a new box. So it's gonna be line seven. I'm going to deny my conclusion, not not Q. So assumption for indirect derivation. 
Again, not not Q means Q because this is nothing but double negation of the argument in line seven. All right. So once I have Q, well, you know what? I just add another argument P. So P or Q must be true as well. So it's just addition to the argument in line eight. So, well, you know what? Uh, not P or Q is true um, because of the argument in line one. Here, be careful. Um, when I do some proofs in this box, I can use this line. I can use this line, but I'm not allowed to use anything in this box. Why is that? Well, because anything in this box relies on the assumption that not not P is true. But what if it is false? In that case, this P, this P or Q, not P. So th th these may not be true. All right. So therefore, uh, everything within the box, well, except this one, because this one is just a repetition of uh, line one. But everything in this box or in any sub proof is true conditional on the initial assumption that we made. So therefore, you cannot take an argument outside of its box. All right. Here, I take this argument outside of the box because by using the indirect derivation method, I proved not P must be correct, uh, true. All right. So therefore, this is why it is outside of the box. So that's a very uh, important um, uh, 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 point that I wanted to make. So once again, I reached a contradiction here. And so once again, because I didn't do any the uh, mistake in applying my uh, inference rules, this contradiction must be because of my initial as sub assumption that this not not Q is a true statement. So it must be false. And hence I close it. And in line 11, you know what? If not, not Q is false, then not Q must be true. And this is thanks to indirect derivation um, for the, thanks to the arguments between seven to uh, 10, not eight, I'm sorry. All right, so one more uh, line. I'm sorry, I don't have any space there. So line 12, I already proved in line six that not P is true. I already proved in line 11 that not Q is true. So therefore, not P and not Q is true. This is conjunction between the arguments six and, and, and 11. And that's the con uh, conclusion that I was trying to reach. Remember, if this is true, this must be true. And if this is true, that was my starting assumption, then this must be true. Hence, Therefore, uh, in line 13, I just rewrite the theorem. Not P or Q implies not P uh, and, I'm sorry, not Q is a true statement. This is the proof of this theorem.